All right, so not only are we live, we are recording. We are going to get go. right into it here today. Let me see. <clears throat> Immediately coughs on stream. How dare you? So sorry. I've been deathly sick for kind of a long time. I know. I'm glad to uh, to see you and hear you. It's been a while. I know Nathan has basically been running the ship for uh, more than a week now. I'm I'm on my second straight week of fighting off this cold, and it is. So I realize I have the blurps going, and management slug said hello there from General Kenobi. So I, you were like talking, but like the blurp oh. totally overshadowed what you were saying. So I have no I, I have idea what stream, you just said. I have the stream muted. Oh, oh yeah, gotcha. I see. Hello there, management slug. It's so nice to see you. Oh my gosh, should I should I mute blurps while we're recording the podcast? Can I do that? Do I have that power? Sup, management slug. Good to see you. Or should we just roll with it and have it be chaotic? I think we should roll with it and have it be chaotic. Chaos! Chaos. This is what you get for having a live recording, everybody. All right, Andrew, hit us with our intro. Let's get into it. Cool, cool, cool. Let me adjust my thingamajig so I actually see when the blurps come up. Wait, I can have that straight in front of my face. I don't have to have, because I'm not recording. <laughs> yeah, so folks, I'm going to be looking over this direction because my notes are over here, but my recording screen is right here. So <laughs> if I'm looking over towards Andrew, it's because I'm looking at my notes and Twitch chat. So yeah, I feel you. Welcome to Talk About Tatooine. I'm Andrew. I'm Nathan. And we are Twin Brothers here to bring you what's new in Nerdum and give colorful commentary on our favorite subjects. Welcome to our cantina. Grab a drink and settle in as we set course for realities beyond our own. Ooh, there you go. Ooh, what kind of Shasta do you have? Uh, grapefruit. Hey, I just got some grapefruit soda myself, but it's the Big K version. So it's Fred Meyer uh, grapefruit. So, But today I'm actually drinking uh, sugar-free ginger ale out of my Mariner's cup because... Go Mariners. Management Slug says in the chat, good to see you guys. Glad to see that Andrew is doing a bit better. Absolutely. Zooted on cold meds is what I got the other day, which was fantastic. Yep. Guys, welcome to episode 69. Today's date recording date is... Put the banana away. <laughs> welcome to episode 69, just everybody. For you. <laughs> today's episode... or Today's recording date... Wow, I just like... I lost it. I lost my train. He got me, folks. Today's recording date is... April 28th, and this episode will be released on Monday, April 29th. We're going to be discussing Star Wars The High Republic. But first, let's begin with our starter questions. Let's make sure we stick around to the end because we might have some news for you as well. Today's starter question, Andrew, this is for you. So your starter question of the day is when you... Here, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm for reference for our fans, this is going to be Fallout themed today. If you were stuck in the post-apocalyptic wasteland, what would be your first move? My first move would be to kind of shelter in place uh, and let the crazies tire themselves out. Let the people who are going to do their looting and do all the crazy stuff in the first 48 hours to a week just spend their energy like I actually do have like a lot of disaster supplies not not a lot i'm not i'm not a prepper but i do have like i bought a container of freeze-dried meals from costco so i could live like not having to leave my house for probably a little over a week uh, i do need to refresh my drinking water that's like kind of the big thing i'm at right now right um but for the most part like i'm i'm gonna be doing my own thing I'm in a shelter in place. Uh, and once that's, excuse me, once that's over kind of the first like chaos E week, I'll probably start slowly increasing my sphere of influence, trying to see, okay, what's going on? What kind of level of law and order is still around? Um, and mostly, and try to establish sources of food, water, shelter. So if like my home isn't safe, you know, Hey, we got to relocate or, you know, make sure that we have the essentials in place and then start moving from there. My second step would be to immediately 
uh, start growing my own food, uh, wherever that may be. There you go. My first move would be I would probably go around to my neighbors and basically try to form a war band as soon as possible <laughs> and just be like, hey, guys, so the world is ending. You should join up. Let's combine our supplies so we can all survive this together. And if they say no, be like, well, you're part of the problem and then loot them and take all their stuff as I would in Fallout 4 or any of the Fallout franchises. No, I'm just kidding. I would I would actually probably start doing the first half of that is trying to bring people together but also start like designating different people's property as like different sources of like resources so like some of people like hey you have a really big backyard we're gonna tear up your soil and we are going to try to grow grow crops in your backyard or hey uh you've got a shed with a tool tools and stuff in it uh are you gonna create an hoa <laughs> No, absolutely not, because we're not going to fee anybody. We're just going to murder them when they don't agree with us. An HOA? <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, <laughs> chat's always we, great. We we need to do an episode on orcs later, because their codex got... Yeah, <clears throat> was not good. So I feel like, I feel like a lot of the 10th edition Warhammer armies have not been treated well in their codex refreshes. It's very interesting. But yeah, but overall, that's not why we're here. That is what I would do is I would essentially try to form my neighborhood into a, I guess a commune is a better word saying you're going to form a war band is probably going to put you on somebody's hit list. So, but it, it but it yeah. might be, but it might be. So Gosh. I would essentially use people's resources and for the betterment of everybody around them and kick everyone else out who didn't get on board. So it'd be <laughs> a good time. What, this is now our land. <laughs> this is mine. I mean, our. So. Before we get into today's discussions, uh, we are going to be talking about the High Republic today, but first we want to thank our patrons, Mike, Isaac, David, and one of our top Twitch supporters as well, The Calm Brew. So thank you guys all so much. You guys are the reason we do what we do. Uh, if you guys support us on Patreon, Patreon, that gets you into our Minecraft server, which we have been playing on quite a bit because I've been running the Twitch channel and everything, and I can't stream anything other than than minecraft <laughs> so that's been fun and so we've been playing a lot on that that does give you access as long as you are a patron now if you're a patron for one month and then you go away like if you want to access some of the digital resources we have on there and you just want to download those and like hightail it out that's totally fine that does still give you access to the discord server because we have a lot of really cool people there we talk about a variety of different topics and we have fun with that as well so that's just $5 a month. You guys can also support us over here on Twitch by subbing with like Amazon Prime. It literally doesn't cost you anything because you're already paying for it. Send that our way. That would be fantastic. We would really appreciate that. But you can also donate subs and gifted subs as well. You can also find us on our Etsy store. Now, I want to bring this last point up and I want to have just a little minute to kind of give ourselves a little bit of ad space here because, guys, we have officially launched uh we we've been doing some drop shipping products where it's basically like products are made to order and they're basically a third party takes care of that for us and ships those out but the profit margins on those are super slim and it ends up costing you guys a lot so we've been looking into different suppliers and different uh supply chains to kind of figure out how to get you guys some really cool products without having to cost you guys an arm and a leg and same for us not costing us a ton in production fees so our first product that has officially landed into our office is our scientific method sticker, guys. So you've probably seen I me. I love it. You've seen me holding this. This is designed by yours truly. So I bought the software to basically edit this. My kind of like running joke is I kind of wanted to just like keep this like right up in here for the day, except it doesn't doesn't really stay. <laughs> doesn't really stay right there. You need to tape it to the your the back side of your mic. I know, just like tape it like right here. Yep. Just bam, right there all day. So we have these on sale. These are like five bucks on Etsy, guys. So we basically only charge you a dollar for shipping. So it's $6. These will adhere to pretty much anything. They're high quality American made stickers. And if you'd like to be that person who likes to F around and find out, that's the uh, abbreviation there at the bottom, you are a participant in the scientific method. So <laughs> add these on. I've actually already had several of these sold. We have a very small inventory of these right now, but they can be found on our Etsy shop. So make sure and they're got... going pretty quick. Yes. So, so we only have, I believe, 10 left in stock already. So please make sure you guys get a hold of those. Uh, basically, we're, we're going to probably have to order another batch here soon. So super excited about that. But all of that goes into supporting the podcast and 
in a week from now that will actually have additional benefits as well from from purchasing things on etsy but we can't tell you yet it's top secret and we haven't been given clearance to reveal that to you guys yet but that also means make sure you guys tune in next saturday because we're doing a may the fourth stream aka our star wars stream and there's going to be some big news that hits that as well so lots of fun stuff here guys let's get after it andrew go ahead and give us the intro for this episode for how did we how did we get here for sure. This week's episode is brought to you by a listener question uh, that we felt needed some more explanation. In our Patreon Discord, one of our longtime supporters, Strike Master Ice, asks, Who the heck are the Nihil, and do they have any connection to the Sith? Let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it. So first off, we're going to start off with who. Who are the Nihil? In short, the Nihil are space pirates uh, with a particular hate for the Jedi since they serve as the galactic enf enforcers in the core world, but are creeping their way into uh, Nihil territory as the Republic continues to chart new hyperlanes into the Outer Rim. Before, the Nihil were kind of unchallenged, but also were a, kind of a smaller force in the galaxy. And as they continue to grow, the Jedi have continued to push back against them, and they don't like that. Uh, <clears throat> they probably <laughs> they probably refer to the Geneva Convention as more of a Geneva checklist, uh, because the Raiders of the Eye have they have no problem killing civilians. They have no problem using chemical weapons, and it like. Their whole thing is like causing as much death and destruction as they pillage different worlds. And their whole thing is 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 based on uh, freedom. It's like we are the Nihil and because we are strong, we believe we can do whatever we want. The uh, it's the idea that might is right. That's that's sort of their one of their core principles. Absolutely. Now, keep in mind, the Nihil are organized into a class system named in ascending order of magnitudes. It goes Strike, then Storm, then Tempest Runner. The Nihil were, a cha were as chaotic as their ranks suggest. So again, Andrew kind of mentioned that freedom. A lot of the times when these guys are fighting, these guys are usually hopped up on like combat stims and things like that. Totally so, like, zooted. Yeah, totally zooted. And just like ready to go. It's like Korn and Slanesh had a baby and they made space pirates and then threw them into the Star Wars universe. That's <laughs> essentially what happens. So the Tempest Runners are essentially lieutenants of the highest ranking Nihil, who the title of the basically top dog is the Eye. The, the eye, eye of the Storm. The Eye of the Storm, exactly. So it's all, it's all weather themed. So keep <laughs> that in mind. This rank holds a dual purpose. It not only commands... The eye is not is also the person who commands and leads the storm, but should uh, da, 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 I just lost my spot. This is what happens when you read things live. You can't cut things out. You can't redo stuff. So not only do they command and lead the storm, but they also are provided secret information that to basically these undiscovered hyperspace routes, which we mentioned just a little bit in our previous episode. So basically they can stay as unpredictable as they would like to. The eye can see these paths and would provide these paths to their ramshackle ships of the Nihil. So their path engines, that's a specific technology that allows them to access these paths, allow them to make jumps that would have harmed or killed other ships. And then the eye himself, so he does have a name. His name is Marcian Rowe. Uh, if you guys caught our last episode, we did talk a little bit about him and his upbringing and specifically his familial heritage that led him to become the eye of the Nihil. So he is an Everenny, which is his species. It's a humanoid species that sports black eyes, sharp teeth, and claws. This species, because they're kind of freaky looking, has typically been discriminated against due to their violent appearance can you hear my my dryer going off is that that banger in the background <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. oh gosh uh he <laughs> i totally lost my spot too uh due to their violent appearance uh and martian really leans into that to that stereotype he is not a wild savage savage but rather a cold and calculating predator who focuses his immense rage into leading his forces and bringing the expanding Republic back down onto its knees. He also continues to wear these iconic masks that most of the Nihil wear to help them uh, facilitate their 
very chemical based warfare. Uh, they use lots of toxic gas in a lot of their attacks. Basically, they'll do <clears throat> strafing runs over an area and drop like gas canisters, like super toxic that either incapacitates or just straight up kills the population. And then they go in and they'll loot the place. So all of the all of the Nihil sport these entire face covering masks, and they're really kind of creepy. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> and they're really they're meant to uh, evoke fear. But along with that, on his hip, he wears the lightsaber of a Twilight Master, Loden Great Storm, who was or who he vanquished with his nameless horror, the Leveler. The Leveler are creatures bred to hunt down force wielders using an overwhelming sense of terror, incapacitating even the minds of great masters. These nameless Levelers then, pro uh, then proceed to siphon the very life out of these force users and turn them into dust and stone. Th and that's what happened to Loden Great Storm. He basically, like shriveled up into a ball like curled up in the fetal position because he was so he was just overwhelmed with this sense of fear and then this thing basically like came up to him and drained the life out of him and killed him very dementor-esque very dementor-esque also he it happens like right in front of his apprentice and totally like traumatizes him immediate ptsd immediate ptsd uh your that event specifically does not happen in the young adult novels that's like one of just the regular star wars novels it's a little bit darker can't imagine why can't imagine why uh so far the nile have proven quite adept at capturing and killing jedi many masters knights and even padawans have fallen to these hoarders horrors and their marauding handlers the nihil have proven to be a dire threat to the public republic and even as far to cut the galaxy in half with an invention that they call the storm wall very excited to hear about that in future episodes coming up next we're going to talk about kind of what the night hill do how they organize themselves in fighting and kind of what's their mo so the Nihil as an organization rely on brutal tactics to fight the republic again these are space pirates these are not an actual like uh expeditionary force these are just guys and ships that are absolutely zooted out of their minds on combat drugs so keep that in mind too much space pcp it's gonna be a good time one way that the nihil fight back on the encroaching republic was to spread the dreng gear across the galactic frontier so again these guys use terror they use chemical weapons basically if it's mentioned in the geneva convention they were probably like hey that's a cool idea so they use these different forms of biological and chemical warfare so yeah we mentioned this a long long time ago and i was actually trying to find out which podcast that we were doing it on and i cannot remember where it is but the dren gear are a carnivorous plant species that are deadly in combat and basically spread like weeds so they can basically like imagine an ant if it was possessed by a demon and liked to eat people exactly but could also multiply way faster than the ants can right so yes again sprouting like we it's like a weed with a mouth essentially Ugh. and not in the fun like dune popcorn bucket kind of way so Ugh. so these are super super deadly and they're kind of everywhere they also just they take a lot to kill like the Jedi that first encounter them are encountering them on this station. They're basically being held in stasis by these like Sith artifacts. They remove the artifacts because they were like, oh, these artifacts are holding the dark side here. We should bring them back to the temple. And they found out that the artifacts were just stasis fields, essentially, for the dark yeah. side force, which was the Drengear. They were like, oh, no, they basically opened the door for these guys to get off the station. And the Night Hill were like, oh, no. And they basically like pressed the button, sent the Dren gear out from this station. And we're like, what did we do? Oh, no. And now the Republic has to fight on two fronts. And yes, that was very, very opportunistic for the Night Hill because this threat took much of the Jedi and the Republic to handle. So it took a lot of their attention away from the Night Hill for a time, allowing them to operate more freely. Another element, uh, we talked a little bit about this in chemical warfare. The Nihil also use chemical weapons in many of their attacks. For example, the Nihil attacked and destroyed the Republic Fair at Valo 
at Valo one year after the hyperspace disaster. That's one thing that the Nile typically do is they'll take the anniversary of previous terrorist attacks and they'll be like, I think it's time to rub some salt in that wound and they'll blow something else up. So in this case, uh, after the great disaster, which was uh, in our previous episode, we talked about it was the great hyperspace disaster. A year after that, there was this giant Republic fair that's meant to uh, bring people together. Uh, think think of like the World's Fair in Chicago, but on but with Star Wars. And obviously, the Nihil attacked. Even with a incredibly heightened security presence, the Nihil are able to infiltrate and basically overwhelm the security that's there because the Republic continues to underestimate, I guess, how strong the Nihil are. Because I think at this point in the story, the uh, the Republic doesn't even know that the Nihil. Uh, caused the hype, the great hyperspace disaster. It takes them a while to figure it out. Um, but like I said, the Nihil dispersed this chemical agent that covers the battlefield in, di- in a disorienting cloud. Uh, and the Nile, who are equipped with breathers, uh, basically make that poison void. They're like, we just walk through it and it's totally fine. Uh, this would prove disastrous for enemies of the Nihil as the cloud approached and then death soon followed. Also, fun fact, the book that this all happens in, uh, specifically the Republic Fair uh, that takes place on Valo, this book is written by Cavan Scott, and he actually specifically reference or takes inspiration from the World's Fair to create the Republic Fair for the Galactic Republic. So you are right on the money there, brother. Excellent. Crushed it. Crushed it. <laughs> So now we're going to talk about when. When did the Nihil become a thing and where are they now? So the Nihil had been present for decades before the events of the High Republic series, but mostly remained at the outskirts of the galaxy. The reason they came back in was twofold. One, because of their hatred for the Jedi. They were formed by uh, basically a cult that didn't like Jedi. And also two, that the Republic and the Jedi were now encroaching on their space. So the Republic had sent out Jedi Pathfinders and Republic forces to basically bring the galaxy back together, and that was not not good for them. So the Nihil were formed in 331 BY, so that's before the Battle of Yavin, so just about three and a half centuries before Episode 4. This is when this is all happening. They were originally formed from the remaining forces of the Path of the Open Hand, led by the Roe family. Uh, that's where Martian comes from, Martian Roe. The Roe family originally gave the Nihil the ability to use the paths and the paths, er, and excuse me, the path engines. As we said previously, the Nile Hill, the Nihil didn't become a known issue until the Republic began to expand. Republic forces and Jedi Wayseekers were spreading across the, the galaxy to bring these planets kind of back into the fold. The Jedi and Republic forces mostly only had dealt with the Nihil in small skirmishes. This is why they tended to underestimate them on a on a global on a galactic scale i should say it wasn't until the events of the great hyperspace disaster that the nile became a well-known galactic threat and martian took credit for that attack all right next coming up we're going to talk about the where where did the nihil base themselves where is their operations taking place now so far this take they have fortresses and strongholds on several different planets but the most iconic location that the nihil mostly operate out of is called no space this is an area of space that is secluded from the galaxy and houses a giant durasteel platform known as the great hall of the nihil basically think of like something that might have come out of the jetsons and you're not too far off again it's a giant platform that is basically has a magnetically sealed atmosphere right over it. I don't know if magnetically sealed is the right word, but essentially it has a bubble atmosphere on the platform. So what makes this space so secure is, even though it's just a piece of dirt still that's like floating out in somewhere in space, the Nihil can freely access this area of space using hidden hyperspace paths. This makes it almost entirely defined hard to find this makes it entirely impossible for other groups to find because they don't have access to these paths or the path engines however later in the books the jedi were obtain- able to obtain info 
Intel. I cannot read today. This is so Your hard. struggle busting, dude. Dude, words are hard. <laughs> words are so hard. Sir, sir, have you been drinking, sir? Yeah. <laughs> Leave me alone. No, not not today. Don't worry, guys. You, you betcha. <laughs> Takes one more sip of hidden cup. <laughs> Don't ask me what's in my cup. Anyways. However, the Jedi were able to obtain intelligence on the location of the Great Hall and its recent fortifications, but I won't tell you more because I haven't read that part and I didn't want to read the Wikipedia on it. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, whoa, spoilers, I haven't read that far. Exactly. So uh, that's kind of where they are operating out of, which is the Great Hall over in no space. So we kind of come to a little bit of the why um, like, why are the Nihil doing this? Why, like, why is this Martian Row character kind of such of a dick? Like, what, what's his deal? <clears throat> Martian Row, or sometimes it's even said Markion Row. I actually don't know which one it is. It's it's pronounced both ways in the audiobooks, depending on who's reading it, and that yeah. bothers me to no end. It's like y'all need to figure this out <laughs> because I don't know. Yeah, I don't but, either. It doesn't matter. Anyway, Marcion Rowe has a personal vendetta against the Jedi. This hatred, which was passed down through his familial line, taught him that the Jedi were desecrators of the Force. So he grew up to believe that, one, the Force existed, and that no one should mess with the Force. That people who were Force-sensitive, what they were doing was actually like, interrupting the will of the force and they're like no the force needs to be able to act how it wills like it, it's almost like it was uh sentient uh in that way which is you could probably make an argument that the jedi also believe that the force is sentient yeah we're it's gonna a little we're gonna need some more uh substances before we dive into the hocus pocus that is the living force so uh, yeah um the whole, a lot of the doctrines of the force uh, are not my favorite thing about Star Wars. It's it's very nebulous. It's very unclear. And I th- I think George Lucas was off his rocker, uh, if I'm being totally honest. I think he was high out of his mind. There's no way he wasn't just like, <laughs> <laughs> what if there was a planet with force ghosts? And like, that's what happened. <laughs> you see, this is how it's going to happen. <laughs> He's like, what if it was like... <laughs> Now, I'm not going to say it was like Dune, but it was exactly like Dune. (laughs) Pretty much. He's like, okay, we're going to start on my Arrakis, Tatooine. (laughs) They don't know that this is my Arrakis, my Dune. Anyway, we're getting real off topic. Um, We're talking about Martian Rowe. Martian Rowe, the bad guy, the big bad. Uh, he has this personal vendetta against the Jedi, this hatred, which was taught to him by his dad and his, his grandma and his great grandma passed down. Now, this is where I personally speculate. We're in speculation territory here that I think this is where the Sith are actually involved. Excuse me. He just needs to sneeze folks. He's being kind and muting himself. Thank you. I used my cough button and absolutely destroyed the airspace next to my mic. Uh, (laughs) I think at some point, the path of the open hand slash closed fist, they changed their name when they started doing a terrorism, uh, which those groups were the kind of the progenitor of the Nihil. Like they were a religious group, uh, the path of the open hand like believed in like helping people and unless you were a jedi then they're like you can go jump off a bridge actually we're gonna help you jump off the bridge we're gonna push you oh no you've died that's crazy <laughs> they're whoa. <laughs> whoa that's nuts he died uh yeah they they really really hated jedi um to the point where when they turned into the path of the closed fist. They um, also did a terrorism on the planet Jeddah when there was the congregation of multiple different force religions, including the Jedi. And they're like, well, the Jedi are the worst because they're the strongest force users because they believe that anyone who touched the force are bad. 
So they they kill like a bunch of Jedi there too. Uh, and I think this is I think this is very easy to see where like the Sith might be manipulating things. Um, nowhere in the High Republic books have we really even seen a red lightsaber. Uh, the Acolyte is the first time in any High Republic content that the Sith have even been hinted at. Mm -hmm. Like at this point, they're still completely hidden. The Jedi do not know that they even exist. They are operating under the assumption that the Sith do not exist. However, I believe that the Sith who we know are operating in the shadows, I believe that they are the ones who created the Nihil through their manipulative machinations all right you guys might need to like if you if you haven't put on your tinfoil hat maybe do that now <laughs> the sith we know and love thank you nice to see a bamboozle ham uh tinfoil hat time i think like this doctrine that uh, i i think that makes total sense that the sith would like whip up uh, this like religious fervor of people be like, oh, people who use the force are bad. Like that's that. I think that is clear, a clear evidence of like this, like the Sith were here because they are like experts at being able to hide their presence in the force. And they may be able to hide their presence so much in the force that even the leveler and the nameless cannot sense them. That might even be a thing. Uh, I actually think that the Sith discovered the Nameless and gave them to the path and eventually the Nihil as a weapon against the Jedi. I think this wounding of the Jedi Order would eventually lead to the degradation of the Jedi in such a way that they would be completely blind to the Sith's eventual machinations where they actually show up in The Phantom Menace. You've got this conspiracy theory all laid out, don't you? I think it makes perfect sense because <laughs> because like the 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 Jedi Order that we see in the Higher Republic is totally different than the the Jedi Order that we see in the movies. Like the really the only similar aspect of it is they're in the same building and they use lightsabers. But what has changed is the Jedi Order has become like like total tunnel visioned. They're like they've really leaned into more of the asceticism part of being um, galactic servants, I guess. Uh, and a lot of their expression and how they understand the force goes away. Like you don't hear of different Jedi who feel the force as let's say like an ocean or music or light. It's just, no, everyone feels the force in the exact same way. Uh, you get a green lightsaber or a blue lightsaber. That's it. There's one guy with a purple lightsaber and that's because he's Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, and the only other people with different lightsabers are the sentinels of the temple. And that's because they're uh, guardians of the temple. There's no diversity and there's no freedom of expression. Rather they're like, this is how you will enjoy or uh, express the force. There's no, it's essentially like they took what we would call freedom of speech and freedom of religion. And they said, Nope, this is the one true way. This is the only way th uh, that you're allowed to use the force. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And I think that is exactly what the Sith wanted to happen because they're like, if everyone is so dogmatic and like, if the Jedi is so self obsessed with trying to make sure that, everyone in their own order uses and interprets the force in the same way. They're going to be too focused on inside and they're not going to be looking outside. This is the same thing. Why like Qui-Gon Jinn was constantly in trouble with the Jedi council because he believed differently. He constantly disagreed with the council and like, several members of the Jedi high council who are in the high Republic are th like, they don't die. They don't, they're there. Yoda, Yaddle, Yariel, poof. That's like 25% of the council, like doesn't actually age out. 
and and that's where we see this stagnation in ideology and i think that's exactly what the sith wanted i think that's exactly what they wanted to say if we can make the jedi order basically become this frail constricting place and not like this force for good then like like they're eroding public trust in the Jedi. And we mm -hmm. really start to see that in some of the clone wars where, especially once the Jedi turned into generals uh, and we're just, you know, Hey, these are the people who are leading the war effort. Uh, it, they were done. Like they shouldn't have been put in that role. I think at all, but they really didn't have a choice because Palpatine is like, I'm, I'm going to make it so this has to be the way. For sure. You also get to see a lot of different expression between the Jedi. So there's like some romance involved between some of the Jedi. Yes. Like some of them have like very obvious and like public feelings for each other. You also get to see self-expression and combat forms. Good example for Nestra Rowe. When she first unveils her lightsaber as a lightsaber whip, she's very whip. yeah whip. She's very nervous about it. She's very nervous about what other Jedi will think because it strays from the path. But she's got a purple lightsaber that turns into a lightsaber whip. It's super cool, and she had that expression where, as if like if if that were to happen during kind of the Clone Wars Jedi, they'd be like, "Hey, that's not super cool." Why do you have that? That's very dark side of you uh, to have a light whip. Like maybe don't have that. So that would be another form of expression that essentially shows why the higher Republic is a little bit different. And I think all of this really leads into this is like kind of where we think the Acolyte is going to lean in is the the Sithra at work here. The Nihil are probably going to show up. Fun fact, the Nihil don't get essentially disbanded according to Wikipedia by like 19 BBY. So basically at the start of the Clone Wars, uh, or I guess the end of the Clone Wars, like basically once the Republic is gone, the Nihil don't exist anymore. I don't know why that is, but that is what Wikipedia has told me so far, is they have a specific kind of disbursement date of 19 BBY. So they are they are present all the way up until the movies at some capacity or another so we need to keep that in mind because i think and i hope the nihil are going to play a huge part in the acolyte so that's going to be really really fun all right guys we're going to move into just a short section on nerddom news if you guys have any questions about the uh acolyte high republic or star wars make sure you guys throw that into the chat we will throw that into the uh, end of the episode which is quickly coming up so make sure you guys ask your questions now and if you do have questions and we for some reason finish the episode and then we go into our minecraft stream which we're going to do right after this uh then we'll include those questions and answers in next week's episode as well so just keep that in mind your questions will be asked answered 100 percent. sure so uh, one piece of news that I, I really hope everyone is kind of getting in on is Fallout is making a huge comeback right now yeah. because the show is apparently amazing. I do not have Amazon Prime, so I haven't been able to watch it. I really want to watch it, but money's tight right now. So I'm like, uh, I thought I gave you my login. Doesn't work. Amazon's real shifty about how they uh, let people log in. And because it's a device that's already logged in on my info, it doesn't let you switch accounts. Well, so that's maybe we need to uh, schedule a time to just binge the whole thing together. Agreed. But the uptick of people playing Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, and Fallout 4 is up like 10,000% or something yep. like that. I actually was looking through my games, my physical copies of games, and I still have the disc version of Fallout 4, so I might be playing that nice. a little bit. I kind of <laughs> want to stream it. I don't know how that's going to go, but I'm like, I really want to do it, so that would be really, really fun. Bamboo in the chat says it's fantastic. So I downloaded Fallout 4 to my computer and my Xbox if people uh, want to watch that on stream that's you something we can do should do it do it, do it. <laughs> uh i tried booting up fallout 3 um it does not hold up no it's it is it hurts my eyes to look at because the graphics are so bad and so monotone and dark 
like physically dark. I had to max out the brightness and I was like, I can't see anything. <laughs> yeah, that's one anyway. of those games that's pretty pretty hard to play. Fallout yeah. 4, one of my favorite games. Oh, and I never got around amazing. to 100%ing it either. And so this like resurgence kind of makes me want to do that. Let's do it. Uh, real quick, we're going to get into nerddom news. Uh, guys, if you don't know, this upcoming weekend is May the 4th. So Nathan and I are going to be doing a special Star Wars stream. Uh, we don't know exactly what game we're going to be playing. We might be playing either the classic Battlefront or Battlefront 2, if Nathan can get his profile back up and working. But in that stream, we are also going to be telling you how you are going to be able to, to enter our lightsaber giveaway so please tune in for the saturday stream mark we're your calendar folks we're going to be streaming probably early in the morning probably all the way up until noon so it's going to be it's going to be a long stream i'm so, so excited i'm so excited i'm like star wars star wars it's gonna be great <laughs> it's gonna be amazing um some other things in the star wars gaming uh new sphere we wanted to talk about uh there's been a lot of controversy around the kind of the different versions of star wars outlaws that you can pre-order as we know uh inflation totally sucks and game the base price for video games is now 70 70 dollars which if you're in a state with high income tax it's closer to 80 dollars for a single game sales tax with sales tax that's a hard that's a hard swing that's a lot of money it is that's that's tough yeah when, when you're looking at like a significant portion of your grocery budget to like buy a video game you're like okay that that's hard on top of that people are pretty pissed off that different versions of star wars outlaws that are being priced at like a hundred and like a hundred thirty dollars respectively uh, are going to have DLC locked behind those price gates. This is, that's a pretty scummy thing to do. <sighs> yeah, yeah. My, that's so my thought, annoying. It's really, like, first off, um, I'm not paying that much. That's too much for a video game. That's too much for a video that's game. That's way too much. It's... <clears throat> Maybe, maybe I will purchase the DLC later down the road if it's good enough. But like, honestly, I, th I, th I think as a community, I don't think anyone should buy it. I don't think anyone should buy the extra packs. I think people should, if they want to buy the base game it, because money talks. And I think as a community, if we can say, hey, like, if we understand that this is like a toxic sales strategy, we need to understand that, see that, and then fight against that kind of fear of missing out and not spend the money just because like I can't even imagine it. 60 extra dollars for like some premium DLC and like some cosmetics and you get to oh and you get to play the game three days early that's not oh, worth what? it it's not worth it why i'm i'm a little bit more on the frugal side because i'm not swimming in gold coins like scrooge mcduck i don't see the return on investment for this it doesn't make any sense it's i strongly it, I mean, if p people can do whatever they want with their money, at the end of the day, you can do whatever you want. However, I don't think that this, I, th I think this is a predatory sales tactic that people should avoid. Not, uh, they, uh, yeah, they should avoid uh, almost in a form of protest to say, hey, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pay 60 extra dollars. Yeah, money talks everybody. This, so yeah. play the base game, but don't like sixty dollars isn't worth a DLC. That's I'm like there's no DLC in the, like that's a whole nother game. Like yeah. yeah. 
it it gets to the point where if you're buying that much extra content for the money that you're spending, like which you should get an absolute crap ton of extra content, they should have just put that in the original game anyway. At that point, the game is unfinished and they're making you pay for like they're making you pay for them not having the whole game ready, right? It's yeah, it's ridiculous. So, and we don't know that that's the case. That they're like, oh, you can only really play seventy five percent of the game if you pay for the base model. Mm-hmm. It sounds like legitimately you're only getting DLC if you buy the gold or platinum whatever versions of the game. They're like, you won't miss out on the story and like what all is going to happen if you buy the base game, but it's going to be even better if you buy the other stuff. I'm like, okay, uh, I don't trust you mega corporation Ubisoft. <laughs> I don't trust that you have our best interest at heart. Um, cause you do not because you don't, <laughs> it, it's like, ah, the the big game studios, especially, I mean, it's just, it's just a, a reality that they're led by people who are looking up for the stakeholders, number one, and that is their primary uh, motivation to get things done is totally. money. Yeah. It's not about the quality of product. It's all about sales numbers. So 100%. It's, it's hard for me. I mean, I, I tip, I, I don't like mega corporations either. I'm like the bigger the studio, like the farther away the executives are from the people who are actually doing the work and creating the game, the less I trust you. It's just it because big wig executive types don't know anything and they don't care to know anything. That's just been my personal experience working in white collar America, but hundred percent way. I'm only a little jaded. Just a little bit. We also I, have yeah. uh we also have a potentially like a new faction coming to Star Wars as well. This is related to Outlaws. So the gameplay itself should have a new crime syndicate called the Ashiga clan. Not much is known about this outside of a few screenshots. So just keep that in mind to hear, guys. So we'll give you guys more updates on lore when things come out. Andrew, do you have anything to add before we transition this out? I think we're ready to call it. Fantastic. So at this point here, guys, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be shifting from our main podcast recording to our Twitch recording or our Twitch streaming. So we're going to be playing a little bit of Minecraft, having fun there. So thank you guys so much for watching, but I'm just going to, I'm going to give my YouTube outro and then I'm going to continue going. If that makes sense. Chat, say hi to YouTube. (laughs) Yeah. So hi YouTube. Uh, So thank you guys so much for watching. Every single one of you is amazing. Make sure you guys ask any questions or theories or anything you have, throw that into the chat. Uh, Chat says, hi mom. Excellent. If you guys have any questions or anything you guys want on air, like hit us up on literally any of our social media platforms. You can find us on Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Patreon. Literally all of those are like in the link below this video, like while you guys are watching. So make sure you guys are doing that. Uh, we super appreciate it. Again, another plug for making sure you guys support the podcast. Follow us on Patreon to get access to a bunch of stuff and our Minecraft realm. Follow us on Etsy if you guys want one of our scientific method stickers. These are available for like five bucks. Please buy these. We'd be super happy about that. We have a ton more designs. Some of them are Fallout designs. I have this really cool Death Claw Skull design that I'm working on making right now. Do it! Support the pod! Please. We actually would really, really appreciate that. So at this point, for my YouTube and audio listeners, this is where we're going to switch over. Nice. Solomon the Silly. Stop that. Solomon the (laughs) Solomon the Stinky! I love that sound. Uh, Again, we're doing this live on Twitch, so we get sound blurps. So if you guys are watching this on YouTube or listening on audio, we're switching over now to our stream, so hopefully we can catch you guys there. Until next time, may the force be with you. But Twitch chat, stay around. What we're going to do really quick is...